Hey everyone! Over the last few years, I've been making a few small game prototypes and experimenting with different art styles in 2D and 3D environments. I've always preferred 2D over 3D when making games, as I feel like it's easier to get a nice stylized look, but something I've never done and I've always been fascinated by are realistic lights in 2D games. Nowadays, dynamic lighting is something very basic for 3D games. For 2D games, however, you rarely see a real light and shadow system. Usually, sprites are just drawn to look sunny or cloudy. But today, we're going to be creating the basis for a 2D lighting system in Unit and build a tiny prototype to showcase it. First of all, let's start a new project with the 2D Universal Render Pipeline template. Let's build a little placeholder level just so we have something to showcase our light in. I am using the free platformer set pack from Zadi Art in the Unity Asset Store to build everything. While I create this in the background, it's time for a little history lesson. Once upon a time, like four years ago, Unity was a 3D only renderer. You could still build 2D games with it, but it was still rendered as a 3D environment with a fixed camera to give the illusion of 2D. That meant that 2D lights were possible. However, they were actually 3D lights, which made them more difficult to use and more costly in terms of computing power. Fortunately, Unity ended up releasing an actual 2D renderer, and with that came a bunch of new stuff, including 2D specific lights, which are easier to work with and faster to process. Realistic lights can really make an ordinary game stand out, and that's what we're gonna try to do today. Okay, so here's the finished little scene I built. It's far from perfect, but it's not a level design video, so we'll just go with that. I gotta say, this is really a gorgeous asset pack. I could really see myself making a whole game with it. I made a quick little camera controller to be able to look around this scene, and now time to create some lights. If you're using the Universal Render Pipeline template like me and you right-click in the hierarchy, you'll see a couple 2D lights that you can use. We will go over each one of these. First of all, global light. A global light is a type of light that will provide illumination for the whole scene. When we create a project, a global light is included in the base game objects, and you'll see why. If I turn the intensity of that global light to zero, everything turns black because there is absolutely no light whatsoever in our scene. Just like in real life, if there is absolutely zero light, you cannot see anything. On the other hand, we can turn up the intensity and our scene becomes super overexposed. We can play around with the color of this global light and this can make for very cool effects. But that's not what we're going for right now. To better suit the dark environment we made, I'm going to turn the global illumination to 0.5 so that we really have a dark dungeon. If I go into play mode right now, we can barely see our surroundings. For immersion purposes, I went around and also put some black squares everywhere around the dungeon. Now let's take a look at another type of light to light up our dungeon, the spotlight. The spotlight is a type of light that only illuminates its immediate surroundings. It's a circle, but it can be adjusted to only make light in a specific direction, much like a spotlight. This is perfect to make natural lights in your game, such as a candle light. You have a few main settings for this light, inner lighting, outer lighting, inner angle, and outer angle. The inner lighting is the inner circle you see here. This is the area that will benefit from 100% of the light coming from the source object. The outer lighting is when the light starts to lose potency, and it will gradually fade between the inner and outer bound here. Then you've got the angles, which work in the same fashion. The inner angle will benefit from the full strength of the light, while the outer angle will have a diffuse light. Modifying the angle can allow you to make lights which point in a very specific direction instead of just illuminating everything around. Like the global light, you can also play with the intensity and color of those lights. Let's add a candle to the scene. We're gonna give it a spotlight, which is going to light everything around. We're gonna give it an intensity of 2 with a tiny inner zone and a medium outer zone. And finally, we'll give it an orange tint to simulate fire. And there we go! The only thing you need to add to have a finished light here is either a little fire animation or some particles. You could also write a script to make the light flicker. Next up, the freeform light. This light is basically a shapeless light. 
It starts as a square or a rectangle or anything, but you can move the edges around to create the shape of your choice. This is a super versatile light and it allows you to create super cool effects. For example, we can say there's a triangular window at the top of the dungeon and we can cast moonlight in a triangular shape in the dungeon. You can also add points to the shape to make any shape you want. I made a cross and tinted it red with an intensity of 1.75 to create this red X on the wall which looks super cool. We can also make curved lights with the circle starter template. I modeled this one into a moon shape to cast on the wall. These are very cool lights and the possibilities of things you can do with them are endless. On to our final light type, sprite lights. Sprite lights resemble freeform lights, but instead of building a custom shape, it actually takes the shape of a sprite you give it. For example, we can take this skull sprite and we'll get a light that's the exact same shape as our skull. These lights are mostly useful when you have custom sprites made to create something like sun rays or light shafts in your scene. That covers our light types, but a realistic lighting system needs two things to work. We have the light, but a real light casts a shadow. Before we get into the shadows, if you enjoyed the video so far, please leave a like. And also, only 0.7% of you are subscribed, so please, subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Back to your content. Currently, our light doesn't cast a shadow, because no objects have shadow masks. The floors and walls don't stop the light either because they're not set as shadow casters. Ideally, what we'd want here is for the spotlight to illuminate the area under this platform, but everything above the platform should receive no light whatsoever coming from this spotlight. Same goes for the ground. Light shouldn't be able to go under our ground tiles. To do this, first I had to set the shadow strength on my lights. Then, I have to add a shadow caster 2D component to the things that have to cast shadows. For starters, I did the platform. And as we can see, when I move the spotlight around, light doesn't go through the platform and instead a shadow is cast. I can also do the bookshelves to see how it interacts with my red X and my candle. I created the rough shape of the bookshelf with my shadow mask and I duplicated it to the other bookshelf. This is way easier if your scene is made with game objects since the mask will automatically take the shape of your object, but I used tile maps so I have to set them manually. First of all, playing with the shadow strength allows you to decide if a light should be 100% blocked by a shadow casting object or if it should spill a bit on it. For very intense lights, a bit of spillage can be a very nice touch. I turned up the intensity of the red X by a lot and set its shadow strength to 80%, so we have a bit of tint on the bookshelf. I also made the candle light area much bigger to be able to see the effect and it casts a super cool ray upwards because the bookshelves block light that would emanate on the sides. I turned off the X to see this better. I also added a little green glow to this jar with no shadow strength and we can take a little tour of our scene with realistic lights and shadows. Of course, this is a very rough concept, but it's also pretty damn good for something that took so little time and zero code. If you spend a lot of time with these tools, you can create amazing 2D scenes. To finish things up, I'm gonna clean up the scene and add a few lights where fitting to make this environment look as cool as possible. The current asset pack I was using didn't have a lot of possible light sources, so I ended up just reusing the candles a bunch of times. I 
I spent a very long time trying to get that shadow mask to work, to create the shadow of the bars covering the window, but unfortunately, it didn't work. Here's a little tour of the finished scene. Also, here's the scene with realistic lighting disabled, and here's with lighting enabled. As you can see, with just these few changes, this otherwise plain scene looks a lot better. Reduced global illumination really helps set the mood, and the window and candles create a nice atmosphere. Pairing this with particle effects, animations, and good sound effects will allow you to make any scene come to life. That's it for today, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, follow me on Twitter, leave a comment, but most importantly, stay hydrated, and I will see you next week. Bye!